she lousy Florida traveling. Just got off work. It's like, feels like about 130 damn degrees. It's been hot. So, you know, since I started this channel, I got about four or five channels that y'all know about that's new, but I got some other channels y'all don't even know about. There's a how-to channels that I'm not in that's not my voice. So I've been into YouTube for a while. This is leading up to, I've had a lot of people ask me when I went to doing the thing on the smugglers, why would you do that? And, you know, that, that, like, that I didn't give it much thought. And I want you to know, I gave it a lot of thought, and that's why I've approached it the way that I have. It's gonna take a few minutes to pull you up a chair for me to explain to you why I decided to do that video. Because for me to do that and for you to understand, you got to understand a little bit about who I am. And I never really planned on sharing that on my travel channel. The price of gas, I've been having to do local stuff. So let's break it down. Pull your chair up, sit down, get you something to drink. I've always loved, and anybody that knows me, including my children, can tell you history. That's just, and culture, I've always appreciated that. Most of you that follow me on some of the other channels that's been around a little longer, you see I throw in some videos here and there. Me and my wife travel all over. We love all culture. So we go to a lot of museums, a lot of places, and research. And one thing I've always loved is my own hometown's culture. Number one, first off, you got to understand, I am a true t native Taylor County. And when I say that, there's two different cultures of native Taylor Countyans to me. There's before hunting club, my after hunting club. See, I grew up in these woods. My mother's people were Lewis's down off of the Osceola River. My daddy's people was the Dices. They were here before the Civil War, long before the Civil War. So I am a true Taylor County native. I was born in Gainesville, but they wasn't having babies here. We come home a day or two later. Anyhow, I appreciate the culture that goes on into my community. Now, when it comes to the smuggling operation, I wanted to do on the Osceola based on the prehistoric age. Before the hunting club era in Taylor County, when you could buy a permit and go anywhere you wanted to go, my daddy used to haul me all over these woods and my uncles. We had a camp down off what's now Rattlesnake Grave, which is in the Camp Misery Hunting Club, which wasn't a hunting club back then. I remember growing up and you'd go anywhere. Me and my daddy was walking through the woods and we were squirrel hunting or hog hunting. My daddy wasn't just a deer hunter. My daddy loved to hunt everything. And when we'd walk through the woods, my daddy would tell me stories about the land and the history and make me pay attention to things other than just hunting for game. He just, and even today he's that kind of person. He's just, he loves culture and stuff as much as I do. I don't think he understands that he does, but he does. I mean, and so my interest in the history and the land come from my daddy. Based on that, I put a lot of thought before I decided to do videos based on the smugglers. I wanted to do videos based on the Osceola, based on the fact that we've been able to trace through, and you see it on the archaeological site, the Paisley Edison site, the sloth holes. They found things in mammoths and different things where they were butchered to be able to prove that life existed here between the man and the mammoth. So we know there's been life of people of some sort for at least 12,000 years. But I knew it was inevitable with the legend of the sunburned bust that people were going to ask about that when I went to doing that hiking. So I figured I'd go ahead and get that out of the way on the front. Now, most of the feedback I had was good. People give me information. They told me things to go. A lot of the people that, that sent me bad messages in the beginning were descendants of the families that were down there. Most of them, once I explained and messaging how what my goal was and what my purpose was, they backed off and actually provided me with information. Uh, some of them provided me with uh, some information <laughs> but, uh, of what I could do, but most of them come around. So here, here's the reason for this video. I want to explain to you my purpose and why I decided to do the smuggling. Number one, like marijuana or don't like marijuana, Operation Sunburn and the people involved was like, on a scale that most people can't even imagine. And in our community, even though it ain't publicly talked about, these people were like legends. Think about it, in a little backwoods town secluded, you seen the videos of where these homes were. These people was living the life. We, anybody thinks marijuana today causes you to do something crazy? 
you need to take off the rainbow glasses first off. And I wanted this to be a travel channel, but I've been questioning about this video, and that's why I'm putting it in this way. These people had an opportunity to make a pile of money by doing nothing more than providing labor. Other people, bigger investors, Columbian Connections, were all the ones that were actually doing the footwork on the connections. These people were just providing the labor force. As the, as the family member of one of the families said, the mules got the time while the orchestrators walked off, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Number one, I've researched this down, not just on the internet. I've went to Panama City, and I've researched records through the court cases. So for the couple of you that thought that I didn't understand the suffering, we're not going to get into that right off the get-go. But I know the losses that, that some of the families went through. Period. There's two ways of viewing when you view smugglers. This didn't just happen here. Some of the same people involved in this were involved in about 10 operations at the same time around Florida, including the Everglades, Panama City, and all over Jacksonville. Some of the same top people that wasn't local people. So uh, people such as Mr. Cobb. So, so, and I'm trying to break this down in a way that you can understand it. When you talk to people in these communities, where these smugglers happen, whether it was Taylor County or the Everglades or Panama City. You see about two forms of the way people look at it. You see people who think these people was down here living lavish and they had it made and everything was great and yada yada. And then you have the people who actually lived it. So the real breakdown is, is the people who lived it, even though they enjoyed a great lifestyle in most of these places, and I don't know about down here, I wasn't there, but according to the records, they, they did do a lot of suffering. A lot of things went on that a lot of people don't know about in a lot of these places. So I took that into account. Don't think I didn't. And I've actually had a couple people that sent me messages that said, you don't understand dealing with the aftermath for the relatives. And we're not going to go into detail, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I gave that a lot of thought, and that's why I didn't mention local names. See, here, let me tell you a little story. In my family, I experienced something similar. Make no mistake. I know that some of the tragedies and some of the things that went on in some of these operations was way different. I know that. I, I've, I've done the research. I've done the footwork. So I'm not trying to compare that. I'm just going to tell you a little story when you say that I don't understand the suffering. I'm not going to get into gory details because a lot of them still alive and it's respect. But in my family, we suffered something similar. So when you tell me I don't understand, let me just lay out a scenario. I got on the bus one time with my younger sisters to some people out of my neighborhood who still live in my neighborhood who had a newspaper when something went on in my family and put it in one of my sister's face on the school bus. And I had to deal with that and get off the bus at the wrong school and call my mama to come get me and my sisters. So I did put a lot of thought in it before I did the smugglers video and that's why I didn't name local people. But the story's too legendary not to tell. When you see the scale of this in the last video I'm going to do is going to explain all the breakdown of some of the big players but not the local players. As I told you in the beginning, the only people that I was going to name was one local and he was only a semi-local and that was Mr. Acosta. So the reason why I named Mr. Acosta, and I'm going to put a link down in the bottom, is because Mr. Acosta gave an interview. It's on YouTube. And uh, you got to love this guy. He says, even when I was a millionaire, I like to fish and I like to hunt and spend time with my family. He's like a redneck. He ain't from here, but he did kind of become a local. Anyhow, that's the only reason why I named him. He has an interview on the internet, and I'm going to share the link down there. You need to watch that. I mean, this guy's like classic. He's you got to love him. He don't apologize for nothing. He was who he was, and he was a family-oriented man. He says it in there. I love the way he says it. I like to hunt. I like to fish and spend time with my family gotta love this guy so that's why I named him so if you're a descendant of those people and maybe some of the people that sent me messages just understand I know what your family's been through I've, I've done the research I know that's why I didn't put it out but the scale this went to NASCAR laundering money how can you not tell that story I mean these people were like legends in our area not that I appraise drug runners but come on marijuana we're selling it legal now matter of fact Mr. Brady you seen the video I did on his home his son grows medical marijuana, you know what I'm saying? They just passed it on down a generation. So as I told you, I gave you my family rundown of where my history comes from in Taylor County. I am one of you. I didn't look to slander you. But what went on there was too well orchestrated. And let's keep in mind, 
they never caught them with marijuana. Maybe a couple of the people that had some side deals. They connected them because bigger links were busted in other drug deals and turned in information on them to be able to free their self. These people had a successful organization going on. And think about where I showed you where them homes were on the, on the Osceola River in the late 70s. These people were living in paradise. So I just wanted you to understand why. I've had a lot of people ask me why. We're going to do one more video explaining the breakdown, and I just wanted you to know why. I'm not out here to slander nobody. Too great a story not to tell. <laughs> we got to tell it. It's part of our history. So we're going to tell the story. We're going to tell it with respect. We're going to tell it with love. Ain't no problem there. Uh, through the grapevine, I'm kin to most of the families that was down in that area in some way or another. Same as most of my local people. When gas levels out, we'll be back on the road. This will be our last video on the smugglers of the Osceola. Next, we're going to get into hiking down to an area where there was a Confederate attack on the Union. We're going to get into some areas up around Ward Island and different places where there was some prehistoric life. We're just going to go see what's out here. There's been life on the Osceola forever, and we're going to do some other places just like we've been doing. But I've been asked by a lot of people, why would you bring that up? I just wanted to make sure that you understand. I love history, and that was too great of an organization, and the way it was organized, and the way they had it going on, and what they had happening, when you compare to most haphazards, and it reached all the way to Escobar. I mean, you know what I'm saying? How could you not tell that story? I appreciate y'all following along, and I'll see you on the next one.